Many games were delayed in 2021. One was Total Warhammer 3 that is finally coming out on the 17th of February 2022. But did Total Warhammer 3 actually make it to my top 10 for the year? This video also celebrates my one year anniversary on YouTube big thanks to all of my subscribers and faithful viewers out there you are amazing this channel wouldn't exist without you thank you for watching and to be clear in this video i won't talk only about new games coming out this year but also a few older games which may either be getting major update this year or are simply great enough to still play this year so let's dive into the top 10 games and even some bonus games that i'm hoping to play a lot this year meaning you are likely to see reviews guides and let's plays of these games on the channel this year so subscribe by clicking on the red button below so you don't miss anything number one is anno 1800 if you're finally out with the channel you know i've covered it a lot from tutorials to advanced let's plays anno 1800 is for me the ultimate resource management and city builder at this moment my favorite games in the last few years you colonize islands across multiple continents evolve your population from farmers to investors and tourists, building multiple production chains, trading, transporting resources, and even you know, doing diplomacy or war. And in 2022, we'll look at the new season four DLCs, but also at many great modes, finishing a record population with skyscrapers and many other playthroughs. Don't hesitate to share in the comments if you have specific video requests for Anno 1800. Talking about other Ubisoft games, we know that The Settlers is actually still alive. You know, three months ago, I would have told you that the game was dead. But end of 2021, we got some news. And then I actually have been playing the closed beta. You can see on my channel some footage of that game. And we know that the game is fully launching in March 2022. So only in a few months away when I'm recording this video. But to be honest, I'm not that excited. I don't think I'll be playing it that much if the final game is close to the beta that you can see right now. Number two is Builders of Egypt. I played the demo last year. You can find that on my channel and I hope to be getting access to the open beta very soon. The release is planned for Q1 2022 and I've heard that it's toward the end of Q1 so it should be sort of March timeline but we can still play the free demo on Steam so don't hesitate to do that. Why Builders of Egypt? Well, Theater 3 is still one of my favorite games of all time. So looking forward to the city builder, which has a lot of vibes from these old impression games. I will for sure covering it. You know, this is about building houses, farms, temples, and much more to expand your city, trade with others. I'm really looking forward to it. It looks amazing. The gameplay was pretty good in the demo. And on a similar note, we are also expecting this year Pharaoh A New Era, which is basically a complete remaster of the famous classic as Egyptian city builder called Pharaoh, taking it to a whole new level with new graphics, a modernized UI, but also new content. It's not just about making the game prettier. So I'm very excited. For example, we've been promised full map and mission editor, which is often missing in new games. And I really love that in the past. Number three is Transport Fever 2. And like Anno 1800, it is actually a game that was released in 2019, but still has a lot of players. I'm still having a lot of fun playing it and doesn't have a lot of competition in that niche. We are not getting DLCs like in Anno 1800, but we're still getting free updates regularly, correcting bugs, improving the UI, or even adding new gameplay. So do stay tuned for that. It focuses on resource management. You transport goods and passengers across the map from one city to another to make money and to grow those cities and industries. You can use trucks, trains, boats, and even planes from 1850 to today with you know accurate vehicles from each of the periods from horse-drawn carriages to the famous Boeing 777. But in a similar fashion, we are getting this year Sweet Transit planned for 2022 announced late last year on steam it's similar i would say from what i've seen to transport fever 2 when you need to transport resources to grow cities but 
there's two differences. One is it focuses only on trains. And on the other side, there is actually, it seems, a lot of more of a city building aspect where you can build yourself the city versus in Transport Fever 2, the cities actually grow just sort of organically if you provide the resources. So let's keep an eye on this sweet transit one. Number four is Diplomacy 4. Uh, you see what I did there? And this is actually the first game that was already released in 2022. It's not a crazy change from Diplomacy 3 if you're still playing it, but it's definitely an improvement from what I've tested so far. Because I've bought the game, but I haven't played hundreds of hours yet. Um, you know, you have more options to better manage the complexity of what? Because what is Diplomacy 4? Well, Diplomacy 4 is you are the new president of a country, be it France, the US, or many others, and you need to manage the whole country. You decide on policies and you see their impact on your economy, but also on the different groups in your country, you know, from the traditionalists to maybe more the liberals, from the parents to the young to the retired, you know, every single policy, every single decision that you make impacts everyone in a different way. There's tons of complexity, but a very interesting UI UX to make it simpler for you to get into that complexity and try to be re-elected, basically. Tell me if you want to see more of that game on the channel. It's definitely something different, but quite interesting. Number five is our last game that is already released, and it is actually the oldest one because it is City Skyland, which was, believe it or not, released in 2015. But very interestingly, I checked the Steam charts, and every year since then, it's getting more and more players. Now it is even in the top 50 of Steam. And if you follow these top games on Steam, you know that most of them are just first-person shooters and things like this. So having a city builders so high in the top is actually pretty exciting. And City Skyline is still getting tons of support. We're getting multiple DLC actually this month, both from the game developers, but also from amazing content creators out there. Uh, so there's tons of modes, including very professional one. You know, City Skylands is definitely the ultimate city builder out there, in my opinion. It may seem daunting at first, especially if you uh, buy a lot of DLC. So maybe the first time you play the game, you know, just play the game in vanilla, no mod, no DLC. There is pretty good tutorial because, you know, you don't get access to everything at the start. You have very few buildings at the beginning and it's uh, while your, your city grows that you get more and more unlocked and it's actually not that hard after you get into it. So I'm definitely planning to cover it more on the channel this year. Tell me in the comments if you're excited by it and what type of city sky and content you're really looking forward to. Number six is Les Sarah Summit Kingdom, a fairly recent addition to my list. To be honest, I only discovered it toward the end of 2021 with a cool trailer, but there is a plan released in 2022. We don't have a date as far as I know. It's in a sense a classic city builder, but a very big twist because you need to build and expand different cities on the side of a mountain. Think of it as if the mountain had different levels and each of those levels is a city and then you need to interconnect those cities because each of the level won't have exactly the same, you know, type of population, type of production from what I understand. So you need to carefully plan those production to satisfy everybody in your society. And at the same time, because you are on a mountain slope, be also ready for things like avalanche and crazy weather. Again, a classic city builder, but definitely with a twist that could be quite interesting. Number seven, to be honest, I don't know if it will be in 2022 because this is Knights of Honor 2. And it's been announced a while ago, but we still don't have a clear date. I know a lot of games have been delayed for quite a while during COVID. So, you know, this is not the only one. But on the other hand, you know, I'm getting a bit scared that we're not getting more news from it. While I I have to admit, I didn't play Night of Honor 1. I've seen a lot of footage from it, but never played it actually myself. Now, this is a very interesting concept where you mix things like total war, civilization, but also sort of city building. Because you build an empire. It's a big map. It's not just a city, it's a big map. Um, but at the same time, you also fight on that map. Don't go on to other map like uh, total war when you get into a fight. It's really all happening into this giant map so in in sort of real time really interesting concept number eight is also one that may not come out this year because it's only developed by a solo developer it is manor lord you may have heard a lot already about it because the details of this game are amazing it's really inspired by the middle ages in europe with 
probably smaller scale battles than many of the games out there at this point, but really realistic battles, amazing mechanics, a lot of complexity, including organic city building, you know, it's not grids. So it, it looks really good in the first gameplay that we've seen. So really excited to see more and also to get my hand on, on it at some point. Number nine, if I tell you the name of the game, you probably know it, but we, what you may not know is that we're getting a sequel. It is Frostpunk number two. Yes, if you manage to survive in Frostpunk number one, this amazing city builder in post-apocalyptic, you a world where the world is frozen um at the, in this first opus we survive mostly what with what i would say coal you know burning coal and in this second uh, opus apparently we will refine oil but with oil we'll also there's new threats to face also i think it's not just about surviving but you know in a sense thriving so i think your people are also going to resist a lot more to your harsh uh, policies. We don't know much about the game at this point, or at least I don't, but honestly, if they take the first game and they improve on it, it really can't be a bad game. Don't hesitate to tell me in the comments below if you've heard anything specific or if you are excited like me. We are at number 10, but don't leave right away because after number 10, there is definitely a couple of bonuses and a couple of games where you may be wondering why aren't they in my top 10, so I'll talk about them. And at top 10, I actually put a couple of games which I see very similar. They may not all be by the same publisher, but honestly, their gameplay is actually quite similar. And it starts with Planet Zoo slash Planet Coaster. And then from those two games, it goes to newer games that have either been released late last year or will be released this year like Jurassic World Evolution 2, Historic Kingdom and Park Beyond. In all of these you basically build a zoo or park and you want to show a good time to your visitors either with typical animals in Planet Zoo or dinosaur in Jurassic or Prehistoric Kingdom. You, know, you build your park from scratch, you buy and grow animals, you manage all of the operations like what do you tell what to do to your vets or even to your cleaners. You build all of the details of your park, like even each of the trees or plants that you want to put, where what they will eat, where they will sleep. So the details is crazy. I have played quite a bit of Planet Zoo. I haven't shown it on the channel yet. So if you want me to show it, don't hesitate to tell me. I am, to be honest, a bit less interested by Jurassic World 2, Evolution 2 and Prehistoric Kingdom because the gameplay feel very similar. I feel like the only difference is you take normal animal or you take dinosaur. And I actually feel that for something like Zoo, I'd rather just go with something real. That leads me to Park Beyond, which is similar to Planet Coaster in a sense, where, you know, instead of a zoo, you, you build more of a park, an attraction park. But instead of a realistic park, here you will build an unrealistic park, because basically, <laughs> The idea is to create the craziest attraction, defies the laws of physics. So it's again one of the reasons why I'm not super keen. I feel like if you're going to create a park, it should be something real. But mm, tell me in the comment below if you disagree, if you're really excited with this park beyond, which does seem really pretty, really polished from the first video we got. Now let's talk about five games that you may be wondering why they're not in my top 10. Starting with Expedition Rome, I actually tested it recently, there is a game discovery on it on my channel, don't hesitate to check in the description below if you want to see it, because there's a free demo available and the game coming out now. RPG fan will definitely love it, um, and with its Rome setting, because you are you know, in Rome, this is during the peak of, of the Republic, let's say, of the Empire. Um, it piqued my interest, but the demo, to be honest, wasn't uh, enough to put it in my top 10. Tell me your thoughts if you think I missed something, if you're really keen about it. It may just be that right now I'm a bit more in a city building than a RPG phase, but still, I'm glad to hear your thoughts. Next one we mentioned at the beginning, it is Total War Warhammer 3 coming out on the 17th of February, so really, really soon. There's already a lot of footage out there, actually. I mean, all of the big YouTubers have access to the game, are playing it, are showing it to all of you, which is, to be honest, also one of the reasons why I'm actually not so keen in buying it right away and showing it on the channel is I'll be way late compared to all of these YouTubers who actually got it for free. But don't get me wrong, I think, you know, this third and final opus of the Total War Armor trilogy 
is great. It seems even better than Total War Armor 2, which was already an amazing game. It's definitely adding a few things like the rework of the sieges, uh, the rework of diplomacy and many other things. And at some point, yes, I'll probably play it. But to be honest, I don't know if I want to buy the full price, which at least in my country is quite high because it, co it doesn't feel like a complete step change from Total War Armor 2. And I'm still having fun with Total War 2. I still have a lot of factions that I haven't played in Total War Armor 2 yet. Um, and we won't get right away the equivalent of the Mortal Empire map. Meaning, you know, if you buy Total War Armor 3 at the start, from what I understand at least, tell me in the comments if I'm wrong, you'll only have just a few factions, not all of the previous ones. Then the next one is Age of Empire 4. Came out late in 2021 and I actually already covered it a bit in the channel. I showed you how to get all of the gold medals in the Art of War missions, did a few tutorials. I actually also finished all of the four campaigns in the hardest difficulties. I actually recorded all of the mission uh, in that hardest difficulty, but the views were so terrible that I, I didn't even publish it on my channel. And to be honest, like most players out there, I haven't played it much since. Don't get me wrong, compared to many of the new titles we got this year, it's actually fairly polished. But similar to Total Roma 3, I feel it's not really bringing tons of improvement versus what we already have, versus Age of Empire 2 and 3 definitive editions. It has less factions, still has balanced problems. So all in all, you know, if you look on Steam, Age of Empire 2 Definition Edition is back to having more regular players every day than Age of Empire 4 already. Before I talk about the last one in this list today, please don't hesitate to share also in the comments below if there's any games that you think I completely missed, that you're super excited to play this year. I'd love to hear your thoughts. The last one I will talk about is Settlement Survival. I also covered it a bit on the channel. Check in the description below for the link to that video. It's still in the early access, but definitely playable. I had great fun when I tried it. I may end up playing it quite a bit during the year. It's, you know, a great successor to Banish. It's Banish 2.0 for sure. The great thing is that the developers are listening to the feedback of the players. They are definitely launching a lot of updates regularly, but it also creates one annoyance for me is that with each update of the game, they're changing a lot of things, which means that every video I do on my channel is outdated two weeks later. It's a bit annoying for a YouTuber, but again, the game is great. It is fun. It is getting better and better. I think there's a lot of potential there. I'm just sort of waiting a bit before playing it more. There is, of course, a lot of other games for 2022, so I may play a lot of others that I haven't mentioned. I may, of course, cover some of them. And I hope that if you aren't a subscriber yet, but still watching, you're going to press the like button and subscribe to help the channel, but also so that you don't miss more great gaming content from game reviews to guides and let's play during the year. And again, a huge thanks to all of my subscribers and faithful viewers out there. You're amazing. Thank you for watching.